Today we're going to show you how to change a tub bearing kit on your washer. It's really not that difficult a job, but you will need a lot of tools. 5 16 nut driver, quarter inch nut driver, number 20 Torx bit, flat blade screwdriver, stubby Phillips screwdriver, Corbin clamp pliers or channel lock pliers, eighth inch Allen key wrench, half inch wrench, short handled three pound sledgehammer or dead blow hammer, spanner wrench, half inch socket and ratchet, 3 8 socket and extension and ratchet. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we should do is disconnect the power to the washer. Simply pull the plug from the receptacle. Now the first step in this repair will be to remove the front panel. There are two Phillips screws about an inch in from either side just under that lip. So either with a stubby Phillips screwdriver or pull the machine forward enough so that you can tilt it back and remove those two screws. Once we've removed the two screws, we'll pull the front panel out at the bottom and tilt it down to disconnect the two spring clips at the top. Now we can set that aside. Now with the front panel removed, we now have access to the two 3 8 bolts that hold the main top to the cabinet. So we'll remove those two bolts. Our next step will be to raise the main top and we'll support the lid as we do that so that it doesn't tilt back on us and then lower it down against the console. The main top should stay in position by itself. Next we'll remove the water inlet injector. Just twist it 90 degrees towards the center of the tub and pop it out of the tub cover. We just tuck that out of the way. Next, we're going to remove the screw that holds the uh, tub cover band clamp in place. Now, it may either be a slotted head screw or a 5 16 And there are two clamp screws directly opposite each other. We only need to loosen one of them. You shouldn't have to remove it, but loosen it as far as it will go. And then with a flat blade, just catch the lip of that clamp. Make sure it's free all the way around. Then we can lift that clamp right off of the tub and set it aside. Next, we'll remove the tub cover. There is a triangular gasket that fits down into the outer tub. And it will probably come off with the tub cover, but if not, just simply peel it out of the tub. Set those two items aside. Now we're ready to remove the agitator. And depending on the age of your machine, it may be held in place with a quarter inch hex head set screw, or it may be a rubber grommet friction fit. If it has a set screw, it'll be located right opposite a small bleed hole in the base of the agitator. Now you don't have to take that set screw completely out. Just turn it back a couple of turns and that should be enough to release it. Once you've turned it out a couple of turns, you can simply slide the agitator off of the agitator shaft. And again, if your machine does not have a set screw that holds the agitator in place, you will need to grasp both edges of the agitator and pull sharply upwards. And if it's really tight, you may need to locate a, an agitator and force it off that way. We'll set that aside. Now that gives us access to the mounting stem and tub bearing assemblies. So there's a large clamping nut that holds the inner tub in place. We need to take that off first and we'll use our spanner wrench 
and either a dead blow hammer or a short mallet. We have to take caution inside of this tub because it is a porcelain tub and if you hit it with anything hard, it will chip that porcelain. So we'll set our spanner wrench over top of the tub nut and they are a left hand thread. So you're going to turn it clockwise to loosen it. Just give it a couple sharp wraps. Take that tub done off. Now if you get one that won't come off, you can take a sharp chisel and just cut it on both sides straight downwards, being careful not to damage the threads and discard the old one and replace it with a new one. Next, we'll lift off the cap for the inner tub. Then just rock the tub side by side to break it free from the mounting stem. Then we can lift that tub right out. Next we have the mounting stem. It is held in place with a set screw and depending on the age of the machine it may either be an 8th inch Allen key or it may be a number 20 Torx. So locate it in some one of four slots around the edge of it. Loosen the set screw. Remove the set screw completely. Set it aside. And with our spanner wrench again. And again, it is a left hand thread, so we're going to turn it clockwise to loosen it. And slide the mounting stem off of the agitator shaft. Now if your tub bearing has failed, chances are that the cause of the failure is with the mounting stem. So carefully inspect that. If you see any signs of corrosion or if you see grease coming through the top of it, you probably should replace this part as well. Next we'll remove the bellows seal. It's just a friction fit to the outer tub. Just twist it off and lift it out of place. Again, inspect the top of that. There's a carbon ring around the top. If there are any chips or gouges in it, that would need to be replaced as well. Next, we have to remove the outer tub. And before we do that, there is an air dome tube that comes down on the right-hand side in the rear. It's held to the outer tub with a clamp and with either a pair of Corbin clamp pliers or if you don't have a set of these, a pair of channel locks, we'll reach down in there and remove that clamp. Simply depress the clamp, slide it up the air dome tube enough that we can remove the tube from the nipple on the tank. Next we have to remove three tub mounting bolts and they're actually different lengths. The two at the rear are slightly longer than the one at the front so we want to make sure that when we put this back together that we keep the short one on the front. So with a half inch wrench and socket, just remove all of those bolts. washer and a rectangular washer and that rectangular washer has a curve in it that is shaped the same as the outer tub. Between the outer tub and the support arm there's a fiber washer. Remove that as well. Now the only thing that remains to be done is to remove the tub to pump hose and just loosen the clamp at the base of the tub. There's a 5 16 head screw on the clamp.
Now we can lift the tub out of the cabinet. And we'll sit that on the floor just carefully because there is a outlet nipple for the tub to pump hose. And we'll set either a block of two by four or the head of that dead blow hammer just to support that edge of the tub. And then with our tub bearing removal tool, which would be your foot, we'll just press that bearing out of the tub. Now there's also a bearing sleeve that is on the transmission housing. We'll slide that off. If it doesn't come off that easily, it's a fairly hard material, so you could take a chisel and just cut it in two spots and it should fall right off. You will notice some relief grooves on the side of the transmission housing, and depending on the age, it'll either have two or three, and that's the location that you would aim your chisel in. Now, to install our new bearing, we'll turn the tub upside down. We'll make sure that that opening is clean and free of any rust. We'll take the new bearing, we're going to press that into place, again with our bearing tool. Make sure it sits flush all the way around the base of the tub. We'll clean off any dirt that we may have gotten off of our shoe. Install the new sleeve on the transmission. And then we're ready to drop the tub back in. Now we line it up so that the hole in the front lines up properly. Next, we'll reinstall the three tub bolts. And as I mentioned, there is one that will be a little bit shorter than the others, and that short one goes on the front. We'll keep the fiber washer between the tub and the tub support. And there should be new fiber washers with your kit. Inspect the head of those tub bolts to make sure that the rubber gasket is still intact. And if not, you'll need to replace those. Square washer, make sure the markings are facing out so that the contour of the flat washer is the same as the tub. Install a lock washer. We won't tighten any of these yet. We'll just make sure that they're all started. And take caution not to turn the bolt. When you do that, you run the risk of if you damage that. So we'll just start them and then we'll turn the nut and hold the head of the bolt steady with the wrench. And once we have all three tub bolts started, we can tighten them up individually. Again, we'll put the ratchet on the outside and just hold the head of the bolt on the inside. Now before we go any farther, uh, it's a good idea to put the tub to pump hose on at this point. We didn't put it on there just in case we dropped a part down into the hose. So aim the clamp towards the front.
and snug the clamp up nice and tight. Next, we're ready to install the tub seal. So we'll want to make sure that the inside lip of the outer tub is nice and clean and free of any debris. And the same with the rubber edge of the tub seal. And you can moisten that with a little water to make it a little easier to put on. Be, take caution not to squeeze the top of it or you will crack that carbon face. So we're going to just grasp the bottom of it and twist it into place. We need to make sure that it goes right flush at the bottom of the tub. Once you have it bottomed out, just depress the spring in it to make sure that it doesn't bind on the side of the tub bearing. And if it does, rotate it a little bit to make sure that it doesn't touch. Next, we'll reinstall the mounting stem. Again, this is a left-hand thread. Now, when installing the mounting stem, we don't want to over-tighten it. We just want to make sure that it bottoms out. If you tighten it too much, it will compress that inner sleeve for the tub bearing and cause it to bow out and it'll cause a premature failure of that tub bearing. The set screw that we reinstall will keep the mounting stem from coming loose. Now as we insert that set screw, it has a sharp point on the end of it that will uh, engage with the transmission housing. So we're going to give it a good sharp torque to make sure that we indent that housing. And then we can just back it off a little bit. We don't want to put too much pressure on the agitator shaft because that has to turn inside of there. Now if the head of that set screw is not sticking out at least a sixteenth of an inch past the shoulder of the mounting stem, it would indicate that we've gone into one of those grooves on the side of the transmission housing and it will just work back and forth until it eventually causes some damage. So if that's the case, loosen the mounting stem a little bit and reset the screw. Now we're ready to put the inner tub back in place. Just rotate that tub enough that it centers itself. We'll reinstall the cap. And the tub nut. Again, left hand thread so it goes counterclockwise to tighten it. Now the tub nut needs to be tightened securely. Tighten it until it doesn't want to turn anymore. Next, we'll put the tub cover back on. And before we reinstall the tub cover, we want to inspect the gasket that fits around that. It's a three-sided triangular shaped gasket. There is a groove on one side of it, and the groove side should lay up against the tub cover. So make sure that that's the case, and make sure there's no twists and that it's in good condition. Now we can reinstall the tub cover. And the important thing in putting the tub cover in is that this portion at the back be parallel with the back of the cabinet. That is part of our lid switch mechanism for our out of balance setup. And what I would suggest is to raise that tub cover enough that your hand will fit easily between the tub cover and the top of the inner tub. Push the gasket down to hold it up in place. And we'll do our final adjustments after we put the main top down. We'll take the band clamp and we'll locate the adjusting screw that we didn't touch in the left rear corner so that we have access to the proper one at the front. Lift the clamp over the gasket. 
and you may need your flat blade screwdriver to do this because that clamp also has to engage the lip on the other tub. Make sure that all the way around the tub that that clamp does engage the outer tub. And we'll just tighten it up a little bit. Again, we'll make sure that the tub cover is pulled up fairly high. Next, we'll reinstall the air dome tube and clamp. There's a couple of methods as you can do that. Uh, this is normally held in place with a clip that sometimes is accessible and sometimes not. And if it's accessible, you can release that clip during the disassembly procedure and actually pull the outer tub right up and then have better access to the clamp. Tilt the tub away from it and make sure that that air dome tube is pointing straight up and down. And then with our pliers, we'll reset the clamp. We'll position that clamp so that it's easy to access. Now, before we reinstall the water injection tube, we'll set the height of the tub cover. So we'll lower the main top so it rests on the cabinet. What we're looking for is about a quarter of an inch gap between the top of the tub cover and the bottom edge of the main top. We don't want it too close or it will scrape on it, but if it's too low, articles of clothing will go over the top of the inner tub and get caught in between the two tubs. Make sure it's even all the way around. We can lift the main top again. And now we can tighten the clamp. A little trick with this style of clamp is that they will bind up on that gasket. So just giving it a gentle tap with a rubber hammer around the edges of the tub particularly in the back corner. That will free that up enough that we can tighten it securely. Now we can moisten the inlet of the tub cover where the water injection tube will fit. Rotate it 90 degrees and then turn it towards the back of the cabinet. Make sure it's engaged fully. Next, we'll put the agitator in. Locate the set screw. Sit it firmly down into place. and then tighten that set screw. Now we're ready to put the main top down. And we can secure the main top to the cabinet with the two 3 8 bolts. Now before we put the main top down, you'll take note where the 3 8 bolts go. There is a single hole on the left hand side and a single hole through the cabinet. On the right hand side there are two holes, one smaller one for the bolt, and the same thing on the cabinet, there is a small hole for the bolt and a large one there as well. So make sure that we don't use the large holes on the right hand side. Start those by hand. Make sure that we don't get them in cross-threaded.
Make sure both of the bolts are nice and snug so that we don't have any vibration from the cabinet. And now we're ready to reinstall the front panel. Now to install the front panel, I'll hook these two spring clips up under the top with the panel tilted forward and then just hinge it back into place, keeping an upward pressure on the panel. Then we can install the two screws. These screws go in at about a 45 degree angle. So you're either going to need a stubby Phillips screwdriver or start them by hand, then tilt the machine back. And give yourself enough room to put a regular screwdriver on. Make sure they're good and tight so that the front panel doesn't rattle. Now we're ready to reconnect the power and our repair is complete.